and the readings will now be given by Fairley from Maryland. The Holy Bible. Matthew. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. Luke. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you of ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Isaiah, when the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Deuteronomy. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of the gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanteth. Thou shalt surely give him. And thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works and in all that puttest thine hand unto. Second Corinthians. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. Correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. The divine ear is not an auditory nerve. It is the all-hearing and all-knowing mind 
to whom each need of man is always known and by whom it will be supplied. Is it not a species of infidelity to believe that so great a work as the Messiah's was done for himself or for God, who needed no help from Jesus' example to preserve the eternal harmony? But mortals did need this help, and Jesus pointed the way for them. Divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. It is not well to imagine that Jesus demonstrated the divine power to heal only for a select number or for a limited period of time, since to all mankind and in every hour, divine love supplies all good. If we follow the command of our Master, take no thought for your life, we shall never depend on bodily conditions, structure, or economy, but we shall be masters of the body, dictate its terms, and form and control it with truth. In the scientific relation of God to man, we find that whatever blesses one blesses all, as Jesus showed with the loaves and the fishes. Spirit, not matter, being the source of supply. Paul said, to be spiritually minded is life. We approach God or life in proportion to our spirituality, our fidelity to truth and love. And in that ratio, we know all human need and are able to discern the thought of the sick and the sinning for the purpose of healing them. If Christian science lacked the proof of its goodness and utility, it would destroy itself, for it rests alone on demonstration. Its genius is right thinking and right acting, physical and moral harmony, and the secret of its success lies in supplying the universal need of better health and better men. Good health and a more spiritual religion form the common want, and this want has worked out a moral result, namely that mortal mind is calling for what immortal mind alone can supply. If the uniform moral and spiritual as well as physical effects of divine science were lacking, the demand would diminish, but it continues and increases, which shows the real value of Christian science to the race. When angels visit us, we do not hear the rustle of wings nor feel the feathery touch of the breast of a dove but we know their presence by the love they create in our hearts. Oh, may you feel this touch. It is not the clasping of hands, nor a loved person's presence. It is more than this. It is a spiritual idea that lights your path. The psalmist says, He shall get his angels charge over thee. God gives you his spiritual ideas, and in turn, they give you daily supplies. Never ask for tomorrow. It is enough that divine love is an ever-present help. And if you wait, not doubting, you will have all you need every moment. What a glorious inheritance is given to us through the understanding of omnipresent love. More we cannot ask, more we do not want, more we cannot have. This sweet assurance is the peace be still to all human fears, to suffering of every sort. Good health and a more spiritual religion are the common wants, and these wants have wrought this moral result that the so-called mortal mind asks for what mind alone can supply. This demand militates against the so-called demands of matter 
and regulates the present high premium on mind healing. If the uniform moral and spiritual, as well as physical, effects of Christian science were lacking, the premium would go down that it continues to rise and the demand to increase shows its real value to the race. God is not unable or unwilling to heal, and mortals are not compelled to have other gods before him and employ material forms to meet a mental want. The divine spirit supplies all human needs. Jesus said to the sick, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Rise up and walk. God's pardon is the destruction of all the ills that flesh is heir to. These two words in scripture suggest the sweetest similes to be found in any language. Rock and feathers. Upon this rock I will build my church. He shall cover thee with his feathers. How blessed it is to think of you as beneath the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, safe in his strength, building on his foundation, and covered from the devourer by divine protection and affection. Always bear in mind that his presence, power, and peace meet all human needs, and reflect all bliss. 